So here's the second part of the conclusion evaluations, which is about limitations and improvements. This is a very important part because this is exactly where you're letting the teacher know that there is a way to fix your lab. That means that not, not always, and I'm going to tell you, not always we're going to be able to control the control variables. So this is where you're going to show how you can improve your lab for the future. Now, when it comes to limitations improvements, there's two types. We actually have here the systematic and the random error. These are two types of weaknesses that might happen in your lab. So when we talk about weaknesses, we're talking about your instruments. What's wrong with your instruments? Maybe sometimes the uncertainty was not working well, or the calibration was not working well. Or it can be also that uh, some equipment has been worn out, so the, the probes of pHs were not reading it well. These are mistakes that happen on equipments, but it can also be weaknesses in which you made mistakes in observing things or the controlling things or writing down the measurements. So these are all different types of limitations. So here is for every weaknesses, you have to mention the reason why there was a problem. Like what's wrong with this weakness? How the weakness that happened in your lab will affect your result and what kind of effect that it had. So basically, if that weakness is, makes a big impact on your results, then you have to mention. Now, for every weakness there is, there's an improvement. And what exactly it must be? It must be very detailed. That means, please give me a realistic solution. When a student said, oh, I did not observe well the results coming. And then they go, this is just, don't even say that. And then they go, say, next time I will observe matter. <laughs> the two of them was already wrong. Or... There were not enough trials. Next time, I uh, will see if I have time to give more trials. No! Or the measurements of a weight scale showed very different variations of weight. Next time, I'll pay attention and make sure that it's a good weight. No! These are no, 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 no. You have to be very detailed on them. And what I mean by that is that you have to explain something that is very realistic. And realistic, it can even be the most expensive equipment. We don't care, but if that equipment can actually make a more detailed measurement, then put it there. So let's learn a little bit more about what random error and systematic error error, because these are the things that you need to look at in your labs. So when it comes to random error, we we're just talking about randomly, unexpectedly it happened in your lab. So for example, you were trying to measure a bunch of babies, but there was one baby that was shaking a lot. You were not expecting that baby to shake it off. That's an example of unexpected. Or you were copying the measurements and somehow you made a mistake. That happened unexpectedly. You were reading the measurements and the device started going cuckoo. Unexpectedly. That kind of stuff can work. Systematic, this has to do more with the equipment. So for example, there was an error in the calibration of the measurement device. Like for example here, you will say the scale that reads 1.2 pounds with nothing on it. There's nothing on it. It's, the scale has to be 0 0.000, but it was 1.2. That's a problem there. Or the clock was supposed to be nice and easy working, and you saw that that clock was always five minutes slower than the other clocks. That's examples of systematic errors. So here, would you put it in the table? So for example, type of errors, you will say, suppose you measure the mass of a ring three times, but every time the, it came out different. See? It was different because of maybe the way you position every time. So that was unexpected, right? So what do you do to minimize your random errors? You do more data, more trials. Systematic error, it can be that you had a cloth tape using for so long and then somehow it became very stretched. So you cannot rely on the measurements of that cloth tape. That's what you do with this. Usually I will say with systematic errors, change, find better equipment to fix this problem, okay? so. Here are some examples of systematic error, instrument errors, calibration. It's not calibrated. You want to put the whale on a zero and it keeps giving 0 0.001. And no matter how much you try to calibrate it, it won't work. Or for instance, you have a scale that only measures up to 0 0.1, you know, and you want to know the weight all the way to 0 0.01. That means you need to change the scale that goes and reads more details, right? The procedure, sometimes you might have here the calometer, right? And the calometer is not keeping insulated, and that means you're losing some heat. So there is a mistake in the calibrate in the calometer that you cannot fix it. Personal errors. This will also be the way you're using a certain type of equipment. You're not using the right way, you are carelessly and measuring the amount of water that you put in a certain system. That is an example of 
personal error, but do not mention human error on your thing. Please do not. You're not going to get points for this. Okay. It's just if you're not using the equipment right and how the equipment has to be used, but it's not about you. Okay. Errors due to external causes. So sometimes, for example, you're trying to work on a plant outside as it grows in a certain sunlight, but then a day it starts raining. It's like you were expecting rain and it happened to rain. That's a problem. Or it was getting windy. These are unexpected errors that can happen. The least count error, uh, the least count error, this is the case where you're just not measuring the right way with the instruments. And sometimes you measure it, every time you measure, you're using a different type of system to measure. That's a kind of error that you can do. So all of these are examples of systematic errors. The random errors, this has to do unexpectedly. So for example, here, weighting yourself on a scale, you position yourself differently each time. Unexpectedly, you didn't even know. Take a volume reading in the flask and you may read the volume at different angles. So today you're reading from here, the next day your eyes are here, the next day is here, unexpectedly. Measure the mass of a sample of analytical balance by producing different values as the air current affects the balance. So that means you're measuring, you're measuring a balance and there is wind of sense passing through. That sand is falling on top of your weight scale, unexpectedly. Measuring the height is affected by a minor pressure. So today he's always doing this. Tomorrow his body is like this. Oh, you already have an unexpected change. Measuring the wind velocity. So let's say that in the different times you have different winds. That's also going to affect your results. So these are unexpected. You're not previewing them. Another one is here. Reading must be estimated when the fall between the mark of the scale and the thickness of the measuring marking is taken into account. So sometimes you don't know how to use the ticks of a ruler or a ticks of a beaker or a ticks of a graduated cinder. You make the mistakes. You read it by mistake. It was supposed to be reading 26 and you read 25. That's the kind of random errors that might happen. So these are things that you must put as your limitations. But do not, and here are the don'ts. Do not do this in your lab reports. You're not getting points for them. One is talking about yourself. It's not personal. Don't take it personal, okay? So I have seen this, and I trust me, I have seen this where our grade students say, I do not pay attention to the instructions. I left the lab the last minute. I should have spent more time on the experiment. I didn't focus on the recording the data. I didn't go to the groceries to get the materials on the right time. I wrote the lab report in the last minute. <laughs> it's not about you. And it's definitely not about your stuff in life. So remember, it's about the equipment. It's about the control variables, okay? Here's what I've seen people talking about their improvements. Next time I'll focus more. Next time I'll pay attention. Next time I'll do a better lab earlier. It's not about your behavior. It's about your equipment. It's about your procedure. It's about looking at your control variables and see which ones, because that control variable was like a wish fulfillment. I want to make sure that all the control variables stays that way. But by chance, some of them did not stay. That's what you're talking about in your limitations. So what are the do's? Talk about your uncertainties. Maybe the uncertainties were the problems in there. You know, some of them have a bigger uncertainty. So you want to try and like big beakers have bigger uncertainties than if you use a small graduated cinder. Why? Because the graduated cinder, it's tiny and it has more ticks. So it's more precise. So if you put in the big beaker, 100 millimeters, you might be way off, but if you put the 100 mils in a beaker that is very uh, graduated cinder that is very detailed, buddy, you use a beaker on the first time for improvement, put that graduated cinder because it's more detailed. Uh, talk about equipment failure. What an experiment you're trying to measure uh, CO2 through a vineyard and somehow the CO2 measurements in that vineyard went off. That's a failure right there. So you, one of your tries come out really off. That's a failure right there. Talk about observations while measuring the data. So that means what if you measure the wrong way? Talk about not enough trials. Sometimes you need more trials because you notice that your data were so off each other. So if they're very far off, it's better to make more data to get them to be very close to each other, the data. Okay. Talk about the procedure while doing the experiment. Think while you were doing the experiment, you were doing those steps. And some of the steps you noticed that you did a little bit different. That might be one of the reasons why your data came out off. Any step might cause any kind of good results. These are the things you need to do to put. Now, a lot of students say, miss, but if I mention the mistakes that I done doing my procedure, wouldn't I get point off? No, you do not get point off from mentioning them. But you do get point if you don't know how to explain how to fix them and why those movements that you did could have caused problems to your results. So if you mention the mistake and you mention how this mistake could have affected your results and how to fix in the future, 
That's excellent. That's actually what they want for the limitations and improvements. So here's an example of it. Proper dry of shells, right? That's what these limitations. Any water droppers which has not dried before the mass was taken off the shells could have potentially increased into the mass of the shell. So he told me why that could have been a mistake. Look at this. To remove this tissue, dry the mustard shells by utilizing a hair dryer. So he went and gave a little bit extra details. Don't just say next time I dry it better. No, oh, give me details. Takes this one mentioned hair dryer to dry it. It got to be very realistic. Here, the temperature experiment was conducted in a room of 15 days. Therefore, it was difficult to maintain the room closed at all times. Occurrence might have caused a fluctuation in the temperature during the experiment. This is because it affects the rate of reaction, the higher temperature, and so forth. What would you do in this case? Make sure it doesn't open the doors. Keep the AC exactly in there. That would be a way of controlling the temperature. Another one here, ensuring that the muscle shells are immersed in the beaker. The shells were sometimes over the top of each other, preventing complete immersion of the water. Each shell should have been immersed separately in one cylinder of water rather than putting them all together. See, he went more specific. Instead of putting them all in one beaker and not all of them getting exposed to water, let's put each one in a different beaker so all of them get water. See how that is more de detailed, that is more precise, that's more realistic when it comes to your improvements. So this is a table that you do, isn't it? You can put it as a paragraph, limitations, improvement, limitations, improvement. So you can do it as a table, like I show here. You tell me the limitations, then you tell me why was that a limitation, and then how can you prove? So it can be tables or paragraphs. That's totally fine. So then it comes the last part of the lab, which is the improvise. This has nothing to do with how can you make your lab better by fixing your lab. No, it's how can you go further. So let's say you are doing a lab and about a hormone affecting a plant. Okay. Now you want to check that same plant with a different hormone. So you want to understand more about the plant's reaction. Or you can use that same hormone that you have used on that plant and use that hormone on another plant to see how this hormone is affecting different plants. Do you notice here that I'm just adding more studies to understand more information? It's nothing about fixing my lab. It's about how can I make this more interesting in the future by adding more additions. Or an enzyme. You play the enzyme with a temperature, like the temperature is affecting it. But then somehow, now you want to do with the pH and see how the pH affects that enzyme. That's how it works. Okay? So that's what improvise mean. And that will be the end of conclusion evaluation. If you follow through from the research design to the data analysis to the conclusion evaluations, if you follow my tips here, you are guaranteed, I'm guaranteed you it's a seven. It literally is a seven, but you have to follow every single thing that I've said in these videos and your chances of getting any lower than a seven will be minimal. So remember that with nail seven, you can get that seven. See you.